All right, let me do a let me do a recap of this. This is the um, this is the game that I'm working on. It's called the Dungeon Crawl. Um, what I have in mind for it right now is it's going to be a side scrolling beat 'em up with um, a fair amount of uh, non-combat elements, doing lots of extracurricular stuff as well, and not just beating them up. I'm going with um, side scrolling beat 'em up just because it's the only genre I can think of at the moment. And this is going to be a game. Eventually, I want it to be accessible to all platforms. But currently, what I have right now is uh, for a PlayStation. Mainly because this is my favorite controller right here. Um, oh, let me, I forgot to mention. This is my, uh, this is my one pager dock. This is um this is based on a book I'm reading called Level Up. The Guide to Great Video Game Design by uh, Scott Rogers. So it kinda inspired me to do this. Sorry for the little detour there. But uh, for target age of players, eventually, I think anybody of any age should be able to play my games. Um, throughout my life, I've seen uh, little kids that were actually more mature than some adults I've known. So, to me, it, it can be done. Uh, game summary. The setting is going to be a utopian floating city, but... Civil unrest is blow is brewing up because because of complacency. I mean, it's a I mean it's a utopia, so you know, no war going on, totally peaceful, and, you know, no conflict or anything. You know, no competition. So basically, uh, boredom's kicking in. Um, you know, police oppression, uh, just general laziness. You know, poor education. Nobody really wants to learn anything because, I mean, why learn if you're not going to use it? So, so the ruling council, they want to keep this small problem from becoming a big one. I've decided to create a game show called the Dungeon Crawl. And then um, for gameplay modes, it's going to be either single player or multiplayer. There's not going to be any crossover between the two. Um, and in each each quest you do, it's going to have a practice mode as well. You can run through it as many times as you want until you until you're comfortable doing the real thing. So I think I kind of explained more down at the bottom. Um, unique selling points. True permadeath. It's going to be pretty much like uh, the Diablo franchise. Once you die, it's all over. There is going to be no, as I like to call it, death benefits. Some other games. Um, Super House of the Dead Ninjas comes to mind where whenever you die, you get gold. You know, you can spend gold and you get achievement points and whatnot. Uh, none of that in here. Once you die, that's it. And then, number two, it's hit and don't get hit style combat. There is, I think I elaborate further, but there's no HP, there's no mana, or MP, there's no action points or anything like that in this one. So, there's next to no math on this. Each hit is going to have the potential to one-shot you, just like that. So... So again, you got to hit, but don't get hit. So nope, and none of that in here. There's no, there's no out gear in the content. There's no out leveling the content. Like you see in a lot of MMOs, like 
level 80 fight level 80 characters taking down level 10 monsters none of that in here um another aspect in this game it's often going to be interwoven into the quests themselves it's a lot of non-combat stuff this is something this is something i don't really see a whole lot of in uh in other side scrolling beat em ups where all you're doing is just beating them up in here um it can you can lay down traps um you can you can repair stuff in the case of a paladin you're also having to you're having to heal the sick and wounded as well as well as being attacked or while you're under fire possibly do it away double tap maneuver by somebody you know when they they'll go through a village and they'll slaughter as many as they can but don't leave they'll just take up an ambush position around that village wait for all the all the rescue workers all the first aid people all the healers you know those kind of people wait until they congregate on the scene and then bang spring the ambush and kill the kill the first responders too so that could be what a quest a paladin can take Um, trading room, I said this earlier, but before you embark on the actual quest, you can, pra you can practice that very quest as many times as you want until you have, until you have, it down, have it down to a fine science to where you know it by the back of your hand. And to me, you're going to need to because, again, this game is not going to have any HP, no MP, slash mana. It's not going to have any action points or anything. It's, this game is almost entirely RNG. It's almost all random. And as a special added bonus, you won't be seeing any little floating numbers. Ding, ding, you know, like you see in most other games. Every time you hit something, you see a little number floating above you. Not in this game. The only way you're going to know if you're getting close to KO on somebody is how they look. I mean... If they're fresh and brand new, they're they're white and ready to go. But I mean, but when you're when that KO percentage is high, they're gonna look pretty well fucked up, just uh, uh, blood coming out of their nose and mouth, etc. That's all you're gonna have to go on. There's there's also gonna be no currency, no no currency to spend spend on stuff, no gear upgrading, no leveling up per se. In this game here, it's down to fan popularity. They're the ones that are going to determine how powerful you are. You impress the hell out of those fans, they're going to want to see you doing those harder quests. Or they're going to want to see you in that super enchanted gear because you're going to need it to slay the red dragon. That kind of thing. It's all down. It's all down to the popularity. So, no, you can't. And you ain't going to keep them happy. Just by grinding the same dungeon over and over and over. No, you're not going to impress them at all by by you being a the, the holy sword, the holy sword of slaying, chopping up little dinky goblins all the time. Boring. I mean, no, you're you got to keep doing the challenging stuff. And in the book, in the book, I the book wanted me to do this, but ultimately. All this is, is just a labor of love for me. I just thought this would be something fun to do. But, like I said, the current genre I have in mind is, um, any of those, the 90s side-scrolling beat-em-ups, they're the ones I I first had in my head. I guess you could probably add a final fight in there. But, yeah. Again, that's also subject to change. Because right now, the only real game design software I could probably use is called Twine. It's what you use to make a text-based games with. So, this whole game here might be a text-based game for all I know. But, so, this is my, uh, this is my super quick rundown of this. 